You, you see, the fuddy-duddiness isn't that bad. I worry a little bit about the erosion of our culture, mm -hmm. of, our, of our family values. You know, I mean, it, it, the, look at the way that you spend your typical day, at least young people in, t in today's America. You can go an entire day without ever having any human interaction. You, you go to the bank, you deal with an ATM. You go to the CVS, you scan your own items. You want groceries, you order them online. You don't interact with another human being. You go meet a friend for lunch, you spend half of it on your iPad or your iPhone texting somebody else who isn't there, meaningless stuff about when you're going to have your next meeting, at which you'll most likely ignore that person. And text the other person you were having lunch with. Right. Didn't talk. The best part of this, the total irony, is not only are they on Fox News, which is television, which is technology, which is not face-to-face. -face. This is, this is, they are literally complaining that there are people watching their program right now, along with everything else they're complaining about. But there's no way that somebody could be watching their program and not be a part of the group that they are complaining about right now. And the cherry on top is that they actually put up how you can follow Megan fucking Kelly on Twitter while they're complaining about how the machines are taking over and everyone's just wasting their time. They don't have enough face-to-face -face and, and family time and shit like that. Are you fucking kidding me? Come the fuck on. Get your get your shit together. So at least your story comes off like you believe it. The family dinner that I grew up having every night, that, that seems like, in large part, a, a way of the past. So with all of that true, and particularly young people addicted to the machines, and they can't get off them. If you take them away, they start to shake, and you have to send them to a it clinic. It is an addiction. It, it is. is an addiction. And they don't want to go to the beach, and they won't climb a mountain. They don't want to get sweaty. And when they go, they just look at their, and, at their iPad right. or, their, or their Blackberry. So there's the Alps, and they go, yeah, oh, well, I can see the Alps on my Alps app. Or Why do I have to go? Or they're very interested in taking a photo right. of the Alps rather than just looking at the uh, just look at it. Right. Forget about documenting no, it they, to show no, the people have to later. Send it just to soak it else. in. Right. And here we have them complaining that if someone goes to the Alps or whatever and they take a picture of it, that that's being selfish. However, they usually take the picture, like Bill said, to share it or to show it to other people. I would say that that's having some kind of you know interaction with people more than just. I guess, I guess he expects you to go to the Alps, just look at it, and then come back home, meet up individually with all your friends, and try and explain to them verbally how beautiful it was. Instead of just going, oh yeah, by the way, here, uh, you want to see how beautiful the Alps is? I'll show you right here on my, on my phone. I've, I've got a fucking picture of it because I was there. And it's very easy when you're looking at something that's beautiful to go, oh, snap. Awesome, now I can show everyone else and they can see what I'm talking about instead of this weird thing where they don't want any kind of technology. I don't know what, what they want people to do, like break out an old projector and show their vacation slides. Hey, get the fuck with the times. Okay, now, so we've established that this is a problem, but how does that erode the foundation of the country? I think it makes us feel disconnected. I think it makes people feel disenchanted, and I think it can ultimately be dangerous. We forget who we are, forget what we stand for, we, st we forget to care about other people, we become narcissistic, we, we look more in the mirror than so at one another. So you believe that the machines make people narcissistic? Not just the machines, it's just the way we exist in today's yeah, America. Yeah, but that's driving everything. It is, it's a it big really piece of it. It really is driving everything. I do, I understand technology's done so, so much good, and it's allowed us work in a different way that is supposed to be, you know, more efficient. But there's something to be said, instead of telecommuting, for coming into the office and sitting around a table and talking to your fellow man and, well, what and the relating. Can't. Did she actually just make the point that when technology like smartphones and shit like that makes people feel disconnected? Are, are, it It's the... It's like the definition of being connected to all these people when you can just get a hold of them at the touch of a button. <laughs> instead of instead of like writing them a letter and having the pony fucking express like ride it over to them, you know, it's being at the touch of a button. That's that's about as connected as you can fucking get. It, it doesn't get much more connected than that. And and there is something to be said about you know sitting across from someone at, at a at a conference rather than telecommuting. What, what needs to be said is all those people had to drive to that one place, like cut out all the rest of their schedules and everything in order to have that meeting where it could have been, they could have done a lot more by not having to all meet at the same place by just telecommuting. It's, <laughs> it's okay. So, so you can't sit across from somebody that 
is a small price to pay for being able to easily communicate with a large group of people that might be in different states altogether, you know? It, they, they don't seem to understand that it's not always the most logistical thing to do to have everybody that needs to be in a meeting show up and sit around a single fucking table. It's, it's ridiculous. And I bet they, they would have a problem if someone took notes on a laptop. They're like, well, I remember when they used to dip a fucking feather in some ink. What the machines can't teach you, Kelly, and here, here comes the fuddy-duddy-isms, all right? It can't teach you, all right, common sense. And it can't teach you to analyze and read people across from True. you. True. So therefore, the voters go and they swallow all it is BS, but all right? I also think, they I think swallow it's bigger than that. It. Bill O'Reilly is basically saying that if a voter doesn't have the person they're voting for sitting directly across from them so that they can directly analyze them face to face, then they are making an ill-informed decision. They are just swallowing a bunch of bullshit. But that never happens. Like, there are so, so few voters that actually get to even see the person they're voting for face to face ever or 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 in the same you know just live most people see the people they're going to be voting for through television the internet their smartphone i mean to to say that someone's making an ill-informed decision just because they've never met the person that they are going to vote for is fucking ridiculous you can find out so much more about people with the internet than you ever could by sitting down and talking to them face to face for a couple minutes and you can make a much more informed decision. This is the biggest load of bullshit. And it, it seems to me like someone would not have to think this through at all in order to believe it. No, no, I, I no, think no. it can make you feel depressed. Here's if, why. if you spend too much time looking down at your device, and, and I, I oh, sometimes feel guilty of this. So I go home, and instead of looking out the window and looking at the beautiful fall leaves when autumn comes, you're looking at some stupid article online. Like, is your life really going to be so much better if you read this one more article that's linked depressed. about how you're going to lose 10 pounds? So basically, anyone that's listening to them or me at this moment, stop what you're doing, turn off Fox News turn off your computer turn off your tv and just stare out the fucking window because you'll be you'll be so much more connected then and and you'll you'll be so much more informed and you'll just get it you won't be narcissistic at all if you just look out your fucking window and look at the fall leaves and by the way it's, this is coming from people that believe that god made everything for them so all that beautiful fall leaves god made it just for you but you're not narcissistic at all, right? It's them people with them them gadgets and them doodads. Fucking morons. But as far as the country and how it runs, the reason Barack Obama is president for two terms, all right, is because of the machines. The machines have portrayed him in a way that isn't true. I don't think Bill O'Reilly understands that the machines don't form opinions. The machines help people form opinions and they help people spread their opinions and let other people know what their opinions are. The machine It's not like my iPhone is like I love Obama. Vote for Obama. <laughs> you know, you know, did you know that conservatives can use the internet too to 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 bash Obama? I see it happen quite often. That this idea that like, oh well, the machines just love Obama. Are you fucking retarded? Do you do you not know how this shit works? I understand that you want to blame somebody and, and what you want to blame is, is like people that text too much. You're like, aha, I bet you you voted for Obama. <laughs> Holy shit. Is O'Reilly's next seg segment about how to keep kids off your lawn? Watching Bill O'Reilly throw a tantrum in front of a fucking TV camera, which is broadcasting his message to a bunch of fucking people sitting on their couches, not interacting with other people because they're watching Bill O'Reilly. So he's telling them that's that's wrong. It's a, you're basically eroding the country. He assumes that you voted for Obama because he hasn't thought this through for more than fucking thirty seconds. This is scary. This is you might as well be complaining about them. You know that music the kids listen to nowadays. He's like, hey, did you see Elvis Presley gyrating his hips? That's disgusting. It's eroding the family. Oh, get the fuck out of here, Bill. Yeah, I see kids everywhere with those stick hoops lately. No, me too. 
It's gotta be bad for their brains, right? Yeah, it, it stunts their attention span. I read an article in the paper. Yeah, I saw that. It's like they lose the power to innovate because they're staring at the stick hoop all day. Yep. Cocktopus out. And don't forget, you can support me through Patreon. Link below. Thanks.